All right. Are we live? Is the question. Okay, yeah, we're getting there. Get the right thumbnail up here. Let's see. I'll just send it to myself. Oh, we're public too, huh? Snap. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me make sure I got this all set up right. Bear with me if you're already in here. I didn't realize I had it set up public already. I know this was kind of a last minute thing. I didn't plan on doing this today, but figured why not? And I want to finish what we started. Probably won't finish today, <laughs> but... We'll try to move a little bit more briskly than we did last time, but you know how that goes, so it'll be what it is. All right, let me put the correct thumbnail here. Desktop, here we go. Part two. Okay. Hopefully that worked, because now it's like frozen. That's on. Okay, good. I think we are good to go. So let me check out the stream. Where the frick is the chat? Maybe I'll use, I haven't tried using my phone as the chat. No, that's not what I want. Bear with me, folks. I know. So I feel like I figure figure this out every time, and then I forget every time. Why can I not get to the chat? Am I stupid? I probably am. Can I just like find it on here? All right, here we go. It's going down here. That should work. <laughs> I have a thumbs down already. What the fuck? Y'all need to fix that. Y'all need to give me a, give me some more thumbs up in the, in the chat there. <laughs> I don't know who gave me <laughs> thumbs down. That's just goofy. All right, feel free to chat, but I'm going to pick up where I left off last time. What's up? I am Nelson with uh, this collection. And so we left off at Every Time I Die, because we just finished uh, Enslaved. So let me grab some CDs off the shelf here. So, a couple things before we get to that. We've got Entheos. Looking forward to the new one. This is Dark Futures. Really sick, kind of like technical, progressive death metal. We have Ufonaut with Entropia. This one's really cool. Their follow-up I didn't like as much. I'm getting this glare here. But um, super cool, like, psychedelic kind of black metal. I love that album art, too. It's, like, really detailed. What is up, T-Pags? Oh, T-Pags, I knew you would be in here because we are going to get to every time I die. I know I left you hanging last time. What's up, Blackwater? All right, we got Equipoise. Cool group made up of members of various people from the... Um, the artisan era bands so you got people from like in fury um and uh x uh entheos i believe and like a bunch of other bands on there super cool more technical progressive death metal 
Aranon Day. I don't even know how to describe them. They're kind of like a progressive post metal, black metal kind of mix of stuff. A little bit of like post hardcore in there too. I just did a video with Eths. Um, featured them in my band's like Ginger video, which is doing very well. Um, I'm not horribly surprised about that since people love them some Ginger right now. I am interested to hear how the new album goes. Um, Isaiah says, what are your recommendations for other bands from the bands I listen to most? Slipknot, Megadeth, Motionless, and White, Dexcore. I'm not familiar with Dexcore. And Code Orange. Um, in terms of Slipknot, check out Tala if you haven't already. Um, did an interview with the vocalist on the podcast. Put out a sick album called Metrifigy last year. I think that was last year. Everything's a blur. Um, awesome. And also the drummer is... Um, Oh, fuck, what's that dude's name? The, like, Dream Theater drummer dude. Uh, it's his son. Portnoy? It's Portnoy's son. Um, yeah, that's Kane Hill. Yeah, that's the way to go. Motionless and White, I'd say Three Teeth. Um, I like Three Teeth more, a lot more, actually. Um, they also throw in elements of kind of like Manson and Rob Zombie and kind of that stuff. Uh, Three Teeth is awesome. Um, Megadeth... I mean, if you like Megadeth, I always just recommend, like, other big four bands. I don't like a lot of, like, newer thrash bands that have the classic thrash sound. Um, I can picture a few in my head, but um, none are coming to mind at the moment. Yeah, Three Teeth is so sick. And what did I miss? Code Orange? Oh, man. I could recommend so many things for that. Jesus Peace. Um, Loathe. Harm's Way, I could go on and on. That's like one of my favorite genres right now. And I am planning on doing on a, a bands like Code Orange when they put out a new one. Um, you got any opinions on the Akasha Strain or any records for that matter? I like the Akasha Strain. They're fine. Uh, I never just really got into them. The newer stuff they're putting out is cool, but I just don't like have a fully formed opinion on them, I guess. They will be in an upcoming tier list. So a little teaser there. Vector and ha Vector, yeah, Vector and Havoc. Yeah, I guess that could be a, a more modern kind of recommendation for Megadeth. I'm thinking of another one, though, that definitely, like, uses those exact same kind of riffs. Let me mute my stream. I just realized I can hear it in the headphones. All right. All right, every time I die, let's get through this one. So we've got... Hot Damn, which I have owned this for quite a long time. This is the album that got me into Every Time I Die. Still a banger. Still love Ebola-Rama, Romeo a go, -Go. Um, I've been gone a long time. So many classics. Gutter Phenomenon. Gotta have that. Another awesome album. The Big Dirty. Even better. <laughs> An album that I actually, when it initially came out, I was not super sold on. But, um, of course, came to love it. My personal favorite, uh, New Junk Aesthetic. Not usually the popular choice. I rarely see people list this as a favorite or even see people talk about that album much, but I really love it. Got X Lives with the cool slip cover too. We've got From Parts Unknown or Every Time I Converge, my friends and I call it, since it's produced by Kurt Ballou and it almost sounds like a Converge album at times. And then Low Teens, of course. And then we are all desperately awaiting the new one. Dude, new junk is great. Um, I cannot wait for the new one. In case people didn't know, they put up a very cryptic teaser on Facebook today uh, with, like, Christmas lights on a Christmas tree. So there's speculation. I assumed that that would mean, okay, we're looking at maybe a December release. But other people are like, oh, no, it's Christmas in July. Maybe it'll come on the 25th. And I'm like, shit, I'm not ready for that. Like, I need some more preparation. I want that to be a big review and a big tier list. I've been waiting on that forever. And they're a big, you know, I just did that kind of poll on the channel of what bands are in people's top five. And every time I die was definitely uh, very high on the list. And so I want to make sure I can do that one justice. So I need some time to prep. Don't Don't ninja drop it on me, please. Uh, Isaiah says, thanks for the answer. I'm going to see Megadeth and Lamb of God in concert. Hell yeah, dude. I saw Lamb of God way back when at the first Sounds of the Underground tour, and they were headlining, and that was badass. 
Um, low teen, super emotionally charged. Yeah, and I also love the opening track on that is like the best. It's like one of their best songs. Um, damn it, what's the name of that song? Like Bimbos from Outer Space or whatever. I've got a sticker over it, so I'm forgetting the name of it. But the I Want to Be Dead with My Friends one. That shit is a banger. All right. Um, then we have another little mini collection here. We've got Equilibrium. We've got Tourist Frater. Awesome folk metal band. Underloved. I just reposted that tier list, too, because barely anybody watched it, which leads me to believe that people don't know who this band is. But if you like folk metal and melodic death metal, you want to check these guys out. They're amazing. Awesome German band. This is Sagas, my personal favorite. Um... What else we got here? Oh, that's the end of that row. Put these back. Make sure I put them in the right way. <laughs> I just can't with Dave Mustaine. Yeah, man. <laughs> He's definitely an acquired taste. Those, uh, those nasally vocals ain't for everyone. I, I can relate. All right. Um, did you know Tim from Dead Guy sung on Fear and Trembling from Low Teens? I did not know that. Um, Dead Guy is going to come up in a tier list briefly, too. Coming up soon. All right, Equilibrium still going. We got Armageddon. I know I skipped two albums here because I don't like those albums as much, but Armageddon's just like... Armageddon is like the, how do I put this? Like the um, Fast and the Furious of folk metal albums. So I'll put it that way. It is goofy, it is over the top, and I love it to death. I wanted to buy their new one too, Renegades, but it is like import only, and it was like too rich for my blood. Uh, we've got Estuarin with Ny Nyarlathotep, which uh, I covered on the channel. Very underground release here like black and grind kind of stuff i meant his politics and born again oh yeah i mean i don't really follow all that like i i know various uh musicians are they have very opposing opinions on stuff but i try not to get too wrapped up in it um ex mortis with ride forth awesome um i guess this is kind of a thrash recommendation too like kind of a death thrash Band, the follow-up to this album was not as good, and it's partially because they had a bunch of lineup changes, but this has, like, riffs for fucking days. Ooh, we got some good stuff here. My mental album collection. Oh, boy, we're going to be here all night. Yeah, this is part two, too. I don't know if you watched the first part, but we spent four hours last time, and we only got through E. And we didn't even finish E. I'm still on E. I don't have enough energy to put onto them anymore. All right, Exocrine, we've got Ascension. These guys are one of my favorite progressive death metal bands right now. Very underrated. Um, Molten Giant, this one is just an absolute slapper. So many, like every track just like knocks you on your fucking ass. And then last, I think this was last year, they came out with Maelstrom, which is also really solid. A um, little bit proggier, a little bit more understated, not quite as over the top, but still very, very good with some awesome tracks on it. I think you can check out the title track. They have a music video, which is very good. Um, X Toll, getting old school here with, um, what's the name of this album? Undeceived. The opening track on this, Inferno, Inferno is crazy. It's like, ugh, I don't even know how to describe their sound it's just so raunchy and so of its time too it's a solid state release too that label <laughs> classic of the time there'll be more parts than devon townsend albums than well probably not yeah <laughs> extol is brutal hell yeah dude anybody in chat play instruments i play guitar as you can see behind me i barely play anymore uh we've got fall of troy with doppelganger Awesome mathcore album, must listen. Um, oh, I don't know why this ended up in here. I have the uh, Shit Happens, the series for Every Time I Die. That does not belong there. <laughs> that belongs elsewhere. Um, we've got Phantomus with Director's Cut. Awesome project with Mike Patton and Dave Lombardo of Slayer on drums. They are doing covers of movie soundtrack songs. 
and they're made very weird and metal and intense and it's awesome so highly recommend that uh, we got Fallujah, their big breakout album, The Flesh Prevails. Another great album cover, very eye catching. Awesome music, too, obviously. And then they followed that up with Dreamless, which was also awesome. And then, yet another case of bands kind of letting me down. They switched the vocalist, and the one after that I did not really care for at all. So I don't have a physical copy of that. I only have that digital. Uh, we got Fawn Limbs with Sleeper Vessels. Amazing, like, math grind, um, math core, vicious, blackened shit. Like, one of the dudes from Artificial Brain is in this band. The um, drummer used to be in Psyopus, and also, if you know the band Commit Suicide... And I'm saying that as a band name, so the YouTube algorithm, don't get angry with me. That is the name of the band. <laughs> that is not a proposition. Um, they have a new one coming out, too, next month that uh, you should definitely check out. Checking out the chat here. Love all Troy. Phantomus, Mike Patton. Now I know what Phantomus albums start with. Yes. Yes, man. That is the best one, if you ask me. Imagine trying to pr replace Mike Patton. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, Black and Math Core is not something I knew I needed. Oh, you do. If you you still haven't checked out Fawn Limbs, I've recommended them a number of times. Dude, you got to get on that. Um, and with members of Artificial Brain and Psyopus, come on. Fear Factory. I only own one physical copy for Fear Factory, and it's Demanufacture, my personal favorite for any of you who watched the tier list. That should come as no surprise. I will probably buy a physical copy of the new one. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, another little collection here. We've got Flesh God Apocalypse with Agony. Kicking things off. Really solid album. we got Labyrinth, which is also awesome. The production could use some work. It's a little, like, dense. Um, and then we got King, which tightened up the production. Songwriting, not my personal favorite on this one, but some really great stuff on here. And then, honestly, my total favorite from them, Valeno, their latest one, which I think was the perfect balance of the faster, crazier, complex songwriting with the much more dynamic um, production work. So good stuff. Blackwater Rust says obsolete is better. Yeah. <laughs> There's a war between those two albums for sure. Uh, ooh, we've got A Forest of Stars with Beware the Sword You Cannot See. Man, if you have never heard these guys, all their stuff is on Bandcamp. They're like a UK band. It's a very like dramatic, atmospheric take on black metal. And it's almost like you're listening to like a play. Because the guy does these weird like spoken word sections. The music musicianship is all over the place. They are incredible. Like they are one of the best bands that most people have probably never heard of. And I also have the follow-up to that, Grave Mounds and Grave Mistakes, which is also very good. I'm... A little bit partial to Beware the Sword. If you need a place to start, this is the one. But the new one is, is really solid as well. Hey, what's up, Stargasm? How are you all doing? Uh, another newer one, new edition here. We got Fractal Universe with the Impassable Horizon. It has quickly become one of my favorite albums of the entire year. Amazing progressive death metal. Little touch of Opeth, little bit of Obscura. Just mm, awesome stuff. <laughs> Ooh, and then, flipping it old school again, another CD that I've had since high school, From Autumn to Ashes with Too Bad, Your Beautiful, absolute classic. That very, like, emo, post-hardcore-infused metalcore. Oh, this, this takes me back every time I listen to it. Every time one of these songs comes on. Royal Crown versus Blue Duchess, Cherry Kiss, um... The last the last song, Short Stories with Tragic Endings, I actually did a short film to in high school. Um, I think I still have a VHS tape of it. We made like kind of a music video. <laughs> it's really of high school, uh, what you'd expect an edgy high school kid to make, basically, with who listens to that kind of music. But good stuff. Yeah, I'm doing good, Stargasm. L l glad I got to squeeze in this little uh, live stream. Let's see, how did this go? Is it this way? It goes this way. I'm gonna take a little sippy sip here.
uh, got to stay hydrated while also keeping the mystery. Let's see here. All right. Uh, we've got also Autumn, From Autumn to Ashes, The Fiction We Live. Not as good as the debut, but still got some solid stuff on here. In particular, um, The After Dinner Payback, Milligram Smile, uh, Jump to Mind. Ooh, we've got Frontier with, um, what was the name of it? Unloved. Another band you definitely need to check out, and they have a new album coming this year as well. Ped is a fucking beast. Oh, the Treyu, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I believe, yeah, dude, I was all new metal around that time too, for sure, and I've got plenty, plenty of that on my shelf too. Um, we have another very underground album here, Frost Helm, with the Endless Winter, awesome like black and thrash, uh, heavy on the black vocals, but then very thrashy guitars, awesome stuff vampire eerie yeah uh we have full of, full of hell with trumpeting ecstasy ridiculous ridiculous album like so one of the heaviest albums ever made most likely another case too though where the follow-up uh, i was a little bit disappointed with it was a little bit too experimental and kind of noisy and weird for my taste um we've got genghis tron with board up the house which I referenced a number of times. Speaking of bands that kind of let me down with the new release, wasn't really into the new one in their new direction, but this album fucking kills. Trumpeting XC, yeah, one of the greatest grind albums ever for sure. Can appreciate some elements of new metal leading me into deeper, darker metal, but I won't be listening to it anytime soon. Hey man, I still listen to that shit. I still listen to the self titled Slipknot album. I did that Mudvayne tier list not long ago. For better or for worse, because <laughs> LD50 was really the only album I really enjoyed. That stuff's all great. Um, Geigen with Quasi Hallucinogenic Sonic Landscapes. That is a mouthful. Awesome, weird, kind of psychedelic, progressive death metal. Um, Gorgutsy, but like not in a depressing way, like in a more kinetic, mashuga y kind of way. I don't know how to describe Geigen. Um, and then I also have Multidimensional Fractal Sorcery and Super Science, also from Geigen. More stuff you can find on Bandcamp. Would recommend. Uh, Glass Jaw with Everything You Need to Know About Silence, another classic. And following that up with Worship and Tribute. I always love this packaging where the CD is just, it looks like a record and you got the little... A record player arm over it and everything that's just neat i'm sucker for cool packaging how do you feel about mudvayne reuniting i don't see the big deal yeah i don't really honestly i don't really care and i honestly hope they don't make a new album because it'll probably be trash <laughs> given the direction that their music went if you ask me the only truly talented members of that band are the the bassist and the drummer if they formed a new metal band together, like, they could probably do really well for themselves. Yeah, dude, LD50 fucking rips. Never liked Mudvayne. Yeah, that's fine. You're not missing much, but LD50 is really good. Have you heard of Iron Maiden's new album? Yeah, I heard about it. I, I don't really care that much, honestly. Like, I just, when bands that have been around that long release new albums, I really just could care less for the most part. And I, I guess that's kind of ageist of me, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just not, not about it. Like, you know, all those, the Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, any of them putting out new albums, I really could care less. And I probably won't end up reviewing them unless there's like really high demand. And it seems like it might be fun to talk about at least. Mud <laughs> Chad Gray sounded awful on that Hell Yeah. Dude, dude, Chad Gray sounded terrible on the, like, later Mudvayne albums. Iron Maiden had their time, yes. That's how I kind of feel about it. Don't like the new Iron Maiden song. I haven't even bothered listening to it because I just don't really care. Um, LD50, best and only record Mudvayne ever made. We all know they can't top their golden age. Hell yeah. We don't talk about any other Mudvayne records. That's right. The first rule of Fight Club is we don't talk about later Mudvayne records. All right, finishing this stack off, we've also got um, Glassjaw's latest album, Material Control, which fucking awesome. 
Another great comeback album. I got to see them perform their old stuff and their new stuff live with Quicksand. And they were great. They were really great. Like, just spot on. Uh, we've got Deep Cut here, Helpless with Debt. Another kind of like grindy, hardcore, metallic hardcore. If you liked um, End, um, if I can find that again. Yeah. If you liked this, you will like this. <laughs> like kind of similar vibe. So yeah, you should check that out. That is also on Bandcamp. What else do we got? Any plans to review Iron Man's new album or a tier list once? And probably not. Again, like honestly, I have not listened to like any later Iron Maiden albums. I don't really have much interest in doing so. Again, if there's like super high demand, I'd consider it just for fun. But I'm like knee deep in so much other stuff right now. Like, and especially August, y'all, we got Between the Buried and Me. We've got Slaughter to Prevail. We've got Ginger. We've got, I, I have my new uh, albums coming out in August video uh, coming out towards the end of the month. And there's just so much. There's so much and so many things that I'm more interested in talking about. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm not really into it. <laughs> I know, gotta get those clicks. But here's the thing, though. I've noticed certain things that should get me clicks don't necessarily, because my audience doesn't give a shit about some of that stuff. Like, I think the most recent example was... Um, oh, I did that uh, Halloween review. And it did it did well, but other people were getting, like, thousands of views for that, like I did for my Deftones review, like I did for my Cannibal Corpse tier list. But uh, my people on my channel like aren't really into stuff like Halloween, so I think it ended up not really working in my favor. I'm still learning. I'm still learning this YouTube game, y'all. <laughs> That's part of why I asked everybody like what their favorite bands are, because at this point it's really hard for me to tell. I think people's interests are really diverse, which is cool. But the one thing that uh, people could agree on, <laughs> it seemed like, was that... Um, uh, Opeth is great. <laughs> like, Opeth came out on top of that poll, for sure. Um, and a few other things that were definitely high on the list. Alright, let me keep going. Another deep cut here. We've got Hollow Bones with Lionheart. Another thing you can find on Bandcamp. Really awesome. If you, like, make them suffer, it's a little bit more, like, post-hardcore than that. A little bit more melodic. Less like of the brutal side of things. I might also compare them with something like From Autumn to Ashes. Something like that. But they're really good. They got dual vocals. They got a female vocalist and a male vocalist. And I really like their dynamic. Going with that. Um, Halloween's good. I agree. Opeth is one of the goats. Hell yeah, it is. Um, I won't embarrass the guy totally from... <laughs> from uh, hollow bones but he sent me this when i reviewed their album and he was like a super nice dude and i can tell he mixed up which ones were sent because mine was supposed to be signed and instead he sent me one with this handwritten note on notebook paper and it's like a sweet letter to like his girlfriend or something like that and i, I like messaged him when i got it i was like oh i didn't know you cared like that dude <laughs> But yeah, I still have the note because I just thought it was hilarious. And I, yeah, I'm never throwing that away because I think that's fantastic. What was the last concert you attended before COVID hit? Dude, that's like a lifetime away now. In fact, one of my favorite venues closed now, so I'm kind of bummed about that. I don't remember what the last thing I went to was. It might have been that Glassjaw show. Yeah, I, I off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. All right, another, uh, yeah, no Himza. I do like Himza a little bit. They're fun. I like to dabble with those bands, but there's only so much room on this shelf. It's pretty full. Uh, Gojira, of course, we got From Mars to Sirius. The Way of All Flesh. Mars to Sirius, still probably my favorite, but they're all just so close. Uh, then Font Sauvage. I have a tier list for Gojira, if somehow you have not watched that yet. It was... <laughs> I've had this track record this year where I, if I put up a tier list, the band announces a new album and ends up putting one out. So I did that Gojira tier list, like kind of waiting for a while. And then I put it out and then like almost, I think like the week of they put out the single and then they put out the new album. So Fortitude is not on that tier list, but uh, I still thought it was good. 
a good video. Um, Vader, hell yeah. Ooh, with Vitriol. Dude, Vitriol's from uh, Portland, so I've run into them a few times. Hideous Divinity is sick, too. That's an awesome show. Muddy Muddy Boss Tones, fuck yeah. Oh, and here's Fortitude, by the way. I do have the new one. Still one of my favorite albums of the year. Gorgoroth, we got Under the Sign of Hell, my favorite from their early days. And then also Ad Majorum Satanus Glorium, which is my favorite from their later days. Didn't care for the new album, are you referring to uh, Ghost Rider? See, I'm the opposite Pyramid Head. I didn't care for Magma. I really love Fortitude, but all opinions welcome here. Oh, you saw Skillet. Dude, Skillet, that's awesome. I know Skillet. Uh, we got my buddy Alex, Grind of the Dead, with Formless Death. Check him out if you have not already. I did a really cool podcast where we talked about our favorite grindcore bands and albums. Did really well, too. One of the uh, higher-viewed podcast episodes. Um, and Alex is a cool dude, and he makes fucking raunchy music. So check that out if you like that kind of like Napalm Death sort of thing. Uh, Great American Ghost... Ooh, my, sticking together with everyone leaves this is a fucking scorching album with amazing lyrics um i think it was a balu produced album too potentially um kind of some every time i die vibes on here but a little bit heavier too like folky stuff like bright eyes i like some of that stuff um we got uh, their follow-up power through terror they had another album in between that I wasn't as big on, but this comeback was great. This was 2019, I want to say. Um, banger there, awesome metallic hardcore. Going back to, if you like Code Orange, you might also like Great American Ghost, I think. We got India representing here with Gut Slit and Amputheater. Brutal fucking death metal. Technical really good there's not a lot of like super brutal death metal i really enjoy but these guys know how to write super infectious songs with awesome hooks and so they're really good you can see them on Bandcamp. um nothing face yeah dude <laughs> tier list on nothing face that would be interesting i uh, just found the two streamed found derivative innovative upon the sounds just how i would sum it yeah that's fine sexiest death metal albums I don't know how many death metal albums I would describe as sexy. Maybe we'll come across some. Um, can't forget about Eddie. Uh, we got Hannes. I've been corrected, too. It is not Hans Grossman. It's Hannes Grossman is the way you pronounce it. Um, I've talked to him a few times, and he never corrected me because he just seems like a super nice guy and just didn't want to do that. But somebody else in the comments did, and I double-checked, and it does seem like it is Hannes Grossman. So awesome the crypts of sleep uh he put out he's put out a bunch he has one before this he has two after this that are really good he just put out a new album that is one of my favorite death metal albums of the year definitely one of the best technical death metal albums that was just last month i think it was in my best of the month roundup y'all need to check out those best of the month roundups too because there are albums included in there that i do not have standalone reviews on and that'll probably become more and more the case over time Dude, I had so much fun doing that Zeo tier list. I had a blast re-listening to all those in like a 24-hour period. And uh, it's going to be a good one. It'll be a little ways out because I got a few other ones that are already recording, uploading everything. But uh, don't you worry, it's coming. Uh, speaking of Harm's Way, we've got Post Human. Another banger album for you Code Orange fans. Wanting that metallic hardcore goodness like I do. Look, we got through another stack. We're making progress here. All right, let me take another sip here. It's hot in here. All right. Ooh, we got some good stuff here. Crimson Corridor is brilliant. Hell yeah, it was. They have, they have a lot of good albums, though. That's what I was reminded of. Steve Albini produced record from 06 was insanely good. I'm Which one was that? I The years are mixed up in my head now, so I can't remember which one that is. Yeah, Harm's Way is great. Do I like Sabaton? I do. I've never like really dug into them, but I've enjoyed what I've heard. Um, this metal collection is bigger than my bank account. Dude, yeah, it's... You, you gotta understand, like, this is 
20 plus years of CD collecting at this point. The fear is what keeps us here. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I don't really like the production on that album as much, but the songs are pretty solid. All right, we got Haunt, The Haunted Made Me Do It, ex-members of At The Gates, banger album, and then um, uh, One Kill Wonder, which is also great. Those two albums are honestly just as good as Slaughter of the Soul, if you ask me. Like, super kind of thrashy, melodic death metal. Awesome stuff. Speaking of uh, new metal, we've got Head P.E. with Broke, <laughs> which I picked up for like a dollar out of like a bin kind of a kind of a new metal classic uh we got high lung with uh what is it like leafa how do you pronounce this i'm forgetting now i think it's leafa seasons of mist record awesome kind of experimental atmospheric folk metal stuff great oliver i hope you're laughing at a uh, head pe right now because i still am um we've got air with uh a pupil de la bime, probably pronouncing that wrong. Some cool black metal going on there. Which haunted record has Ola England on it? Um, shit, I gotta Google this now. I'm trying to remember. Um, the haunted. I'm I'm trying to remember which vocalist is which now. Uh, because I like the original vocalist better than the guy that took over so okay so i like peter dolving and he is on the ones that i just showed you um up through one kill wonder and then oh wait no marco arrow no 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 i messed up so marco arrow is on those two albums and then after that with revolver that's when oh peter dolving came back for that and then, wait, and then, wait, where's Ola? Is he just a guest? Yeah, because Peter Dolving took over. And then with, was it Exit Wounds he came back? Yeah, Marco came back for Exit Wounds. Clarify for me. I don't remember. See Necrotic Rick. I don't um watch a lot of other metal YouTubers' videos, honestly. Like, I'm just so busy at this point. And I watch mostly, like, comedy on YouTube and, like, speed runs and stuff is fortitude cover really really similar to emperor of sand yeah i guess there are some similarities there um poor guy in the album cover graduated after 10 years of college and now he's broke <laughs> uh yeah he has a bit yeah so gonna finish this time no we're not gonna finish there's no way there's no way we're on fucking h and this thing goes all the way down to the floor like the cds go all the way down we might get through metal maybe but there's also, like, a bunch of alternative at the bottom, too. I think he might have been a touring member. Yeah, I forget how their lineup works out. Um, maybe I'm an idiot and I immediately assumed vocals and you're not even talking about vocals. Anyways, why do I even know that name? Like, I I'm, I'm feel like I'm stupid and I know who you're talking about and I'm just not making the connection. Oh, yeah, I know this guy. Oh, yeah, he's, like, a producer, too. Yeah, he was... Okay, he was... He's... It looks like he's in The Haunted now, is what this is saying. Let me see. Associated acts. Yeah, The Haunted is listed as active. Which albums? Okay, so he was on the Eye of the Storm EP and Exit Wounds. And Strength in Numbers. So, yeah, he's been on all of the, the newer ones. Good call. Yeah, I'm like, I know that name, but I just couldn't put the face to it. Bradley Hall. All right. Hopes Fall. Getting some more metalcore goodness going here. We have Frailty of Words, which is a great album that they, like, don't even list on their website. It's like they've excommunicated it for some reason. I guess it's just, like, too heavy and raw for them, but uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, then you've got the No Wings to Speak of EP, which is kind of their transitional period. It's almost like they're kind of like broken, <laughs> like for Nine Inch Nails, where they're transitioning to their more kind of melodic side. All right, later, dude. <laughs> yeah, see you in the trenches for sure. Uh, I've got the Satellite Years, which is sort of like their big explosive album that everybody had. And then A-Types, which is 
their transition into more kind of alternative. It's more like rock at that point. There are some good songs on it, though. Like, I really like Icarus, of course, go figure. But, um, yeah, kind of a different kind of album. And then, unfortunately, The Magnetic North is kind of a dud. I just have it because I got it for, like, a dollar, and I wanted to round out the collection. Um, and, yeah, it's it's it kind of sucks. But they had issues with the Trust Kill label, like a lot of other people, and they blamed them for kind of fucking over that album. But luckily, though, they came back with Arbiter, which was one of my favorite albums of that year, and it was like the perfect summer album. It's just like a feel-good, chill time. It's perfectly fitting to that album art. Definitely check that out. You like the Magnetic North a lot. Interesting. I've tried to revisit it a number of times, but even the band doesn't like it. Like, they're they're just not into it at all. All right, getting heavier here. We've got Horrendous with Idol. You know, I, for a long time, was not a champion of Horrendous. Everybody else was raving about him, and I was like, eh, it's fine, I don't really get it. And then this album came out and smashed me to fucking pieces. And I'm like, okay, now I get it. <laughs> you got me with this one. What kind of speedrunning videos have you been watching? Um, I've just been watching some of the stuff in the Games Done Quick channel, because they just had their, like, biannual event. I like watching the really glitchy, goofy ones where they do crazy shit where I'm like, holy fuck, what the hell did you just do? Like, those are my favorite. I also like watching people speed run, like, horror games. Or also, like, shitty games, too, when they do, like, the shit game block where it's all, like, low-quality ones. Um, joke games, stuff like that. Games from my childhood, too. I watched one today for, like, Yoshi's Story, and I just remember playing that. So, yeah, I love that shit. Yeah, Idol is insane. Yeah, dude, I agree. I agree. One of the best death metal albums of the 2010s. Um, we've got my homies at the Hudson Horror uh, who do our theme song. Awesome melodic death metal. I've got Ruiner. I've got Nemesis. And Nemesis is where our theme song is called. It is actually in case you're... Um, it's in the credits of every video... But if you're wondering what the name of that song is, it's What the Moon Brings. And in the podcast, it plays the intro. Before the videos, it's played in reverse. That little sound snippet you hear in all the little intro moments. Yeah. <laughs> Barely Held is making band songs in five minutes. Oh, yeah, I like those. Uh, we've got Humavoid with Lidless. One of my favorite albums of last year, Meshuggah with Kitar and with dual vocals, one of which the front woman is, is we've got a female vocalist. She's awesome. They were really great on the podcast, too, and I had a great time talking to them. Thoughts on David? Dude, I'm, I'm, I don't really care about Megadeth. I'm just going to be clear with you. <laughs> I, just, I don't really have thoughts about it, personally. Uh, Igor, Savage Sinusoid, which is a magnificent album that kind of like got me into them. And then, of course, they followed that up with the even crazier Spirituality and Distortion. I've been saying this year we haven't gotten enough weird and wild shit, like bizarre experimental stuff that's still like catchy. And like Igor and Psy in particular scratch that itch for me. Um, speaking of which, on some level, we also have Isan with Arctis, and it's the fancy book-style cover. I like these a lot whenever I can find them. Gotta be real. Peace Cell. Yeah, Peace Cell is great. Yeah, Humavoid, awesome. Really dig Lidless. I'm glad people are checking them out. Um, oh, shit, a bunch of stuff happened in the chat. Uh, not really music-related, but definitely part of the Warp Tour scene. Have you all seen the video Drinking Out of Cups? That is That sounds so familiar. I think I have. It's probably the thing that most influences my sense of humor. I gotta check that out again. That sounds super familiar. And I'm really into, like, old-school YouTube. Because I used to watch, like, Balloon Shop and all that, like, old skit comedy stuff that people would put up in the, the good old days. The golden age of YouTube. Aha, Music Finder. Google extension's really handy. I found your intro song with it. Haha, nice. Um, but we gotta be real peace. Uh, I said that already. All you need is rest in peace and you can call it a day with Megadeth. Yeah, more or less. I don't see you need to listen to anything else beyond that. Oh, another collection here. We have Immortal with Pure Holocaust. Look at those handsome boys. <laughs> We've got Battles in the North 
<laughs> this this album cover is iconic too. Like it is like the dorkiest fucking thing for such a heavy, sick album. But man, I love it. That's something I love about Immortal. Um, I do not have Battle Beasts because Battle Beasts we don't just like we don't talk about the later Mudvayne discography. We don't talk about Battle Beasts, but we do have At the Heart of Winter, which is arguably the best one, the most like melodic, most interesting songwriting. Um, we have Damned in Black, and then we have Sons of the Northern Darkness, which is another personal favorite of mine if you want something a little bit just more harsh and thrashy, but um, a little bit better produced than their earlier stuff. All Shall Fall, my personal favorite album cover from them. Pretty solid album, even if it's not one of their best. And, of course, we've got Northern Chaos Gods, and let me tell you, I did not think that you could pull off an Immortal album without Abbott, but... They did, and it's fucking sick, and this is just a, a great black metal record. So there you go. Um, still talking about Megadeth. <laughs> Let it go. Okay, wow, we got through another row. Look at us. Look at us, couple of cards. All right, putting that one back. Try not to break anything or drop anything. Oh, I'm sweating. Got to take another drink here chat amongst yourselves up <laughs> oh, somebody's at the door all right abbott all's awesome in interviews yeah dude he's hilarious black metal classic right there all right we have some stuff here we got kill switch the self-titled debut which may be out of print now too because they did the reissue um, but this is the original off of Ferret Records. Good old Ferret Records. Um, we've got Alive or Just Breathing. Probably my personal favorite. Awesome album. Uh, like the album, this is the album that kind of jump started the At the Gates core sound, where every metalcore band started uh, jacking At the Gates riffs. And I'm totally fine with it. <laughs> End of the Heartache, when Howard's taken over on vocals. I still remember picking this up at Best Buy the day it came out. Um, I got a deal on it, too. I still remember $5.99. I got it for $5.99. That was how long ago, and I still remember that for some reason. Yet I can't remember the name of, like, half of our new employees at work. So there you go. Um, Disarm the Descent, special edition. Great comeback album for Jesse. After they had put out kind of a few stinkers, in my opinion. And Atonement. This album has no right being as good as it is. But if you ask me, it's one of their best albums. Like, they absolutely killed it. I'm not a huge fan of this album cover. Something about it is just, like, kind of... I don't know. It's very, like... It's an... I don't even know how to put it. I won't even go there. But anyways, it's a great album, and I fucking loved it. One of my favorites of that year, probably. Do you own 500 copies of play? Yeah, I think that <laughs> some people would like that. Uh, original fair presses are out of print. I believe so, but the top shelf press is still around. You should do a viewer response for the worst metal. Uh, okay. Um, love Disarm the Descent. Thank you for joining the chat with us, Robert. <laughs> it was something that we're we're looking at right now. Yeah, dude, Disarm the Descent's great. Talica St. Anna is one of the worst. Yes, of course. Well, that's a given. Um, I have another note from somebody in my stuff. I like to keep those periodically. Uh, we've got Imperial Triumphant with Vile Luxury, my personal favorite. Did a interview with them live at the inter uh, at the venue when they were in the tour touring cycle. Very fun interview. Um, and then, of course, we have Alphaville, which is also excellent. But I kind of like Vile Luxury a little bit better. Uh, implore with subjugate more kind of like intense grindy hardcore almost a little bit blackened at times but just good stuff uh, we got some indian so indian with from all purity sick album um, i believe that uh my buddy charlie fell from lord mantis makes an appearance appearance on this album as well i love that album cover too these guys are, uh, if you like Lord Mantis, you'll like Indian. They actually have a bunch of crossover members. 
uh imperial triumphant fun one yeah both amazing albums for sure one of the best of 2020 great future ahead of them for sure especially like for such a crazy like noisy band the fact that they're getting so big is really exciting and cool like it makes me it gives me hope for the future of music <laughs> robert sparlin's trash can snare can sound great uh yes um infant annihilator the battle of Yald Yaldabaoth, or however the fuck you pronounce it. This is a sick fucking deathcore album. Holy fuck, dude. That was a good year for deathcore in general. This, it just is loud and, like, huge sounding, and that vocalist is just insane. Like, one of the best in the genre. Um, ooh, we got my buddies Inertia, one of the first interviews I ever did. Uh, we've got Kot the Kotar Delusion, but more importantly, we have the album i was interviewing them on which is teratoma these guys are out of um new york state i forget exactly where not in new york city and sick math core their guitarist is like he has a doctorate in playing guitar and he's insane it's awesome if you like stuff like dillinger escape plan and crazy math core you're gonna want to check them out you can find that on uh band camp again that's inertia I N E R T I A Snapcase there's a tier list. Oh man. Meshuggah brings things to life, referring to Thomas Hawkeye performing Imperial Triumphant on Alphaville. Oh man. Uh alright. We've got another little mini collection here. We've got Inferi with the Path of Apotheosis. Great technical kind of progressive death metal band. Revenant, the follow-up to that awesome record. That's the one that got me into them. Have an interview with the uh, with Malcolm Pugh. He also runs the Artisan Era too. Um, and then we've got the End of an Era Rebirth. Um, love the EP after this one too. Really sick release. And then I believe they have a new full length coming. But getting into, we talked about abnormality or dehydrated. Abnormality was in the previous episode because we are on letter I right now so we are well past a and i do not have any dehydrated i am dehydrated though i'll check out that math core band you just mentioned yeah hell yeah dude definitely check them out in flames we have horacle i thought i had the jester race but apparently i don't but i have horacle um we've got colony one of my personal favorites um uh, an album with a very device, divisive response, but honestly, probably my favorite to re-listen to is Reroute to Remain. It's, it's a sick fucking album. I don't care what anybody says. Soundtrack to Your Escape, really solid too. Uh, we've got Come Clarity, which is the only one, one of the only ones of their later career that I kind of enjoy. And then there was another one when I did the tier list I realized I enjoyed too. I can't remember now, but I don't have a hard copy of that one. This band went in flames, for sure. <laughs> yeah, dude, it is a trip. I only really have the ones I really enjoy. Yeah, dude, Visions on Rock Band. That was a tough one. Insomnium, my personal favorite Insomnium record, Winter's Gate. I love how progressive it is. I love how every song flows into another. And I love how even on the back, the track listing is simply Winter's Gate, 40 minutes. I love that. <laughs> But I like that they still separated it into tracks so that you could jump around. Yeah, dude, Siren Charms. Holy fuck. We don't talk about Siren Charms either. <laughs> Not in this chat. Ugh. Oh, fuck, I'm knocking things over. Ugh. Okay. This one's a little out of order, but I didn't have a good spot for it. This is Leviathan Leviathan, with um, Scar Sighted. It's the box edition with the artwork. I actually have the artwork up on the wall right there, all the little cards it came with, so that was kind of neat. Um, ooh, the, uh, I've got the Forbidden discography over here. It is Verboden. Um, we've got Inquisition <laughs> with ominous doctrines of the perpetual mystical macrocosm. That just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? 
We've got Inquisition with Obscure Verses to the Multiverse. We have Inquisition with, oh, god damn, Bloodshed Across the Empyrean Altar Beyond the Celestial Zenith. Chill out with your fucking titles, y'all. <laughs> and the latest one that I was not expecting to like as much as I did, despite the controversy, but Black Mass for a Black Grave. I did end up buying it. I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad boy. Are you gonna... You gonna punish me? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I liked I liked the songs. Um, yeah, I'll have to check out Dehydrated. Can't do melodic death metal. You can't do melodic death metal. I don't know. Oh, man, that's crazy to me. There's so much good melodic death metal out there. It's like one of my favorite genres. Um, let's see. Do you check it? Leviathan is such an odd band. Yes, they are. But that album is fucking sick. Oh, my goodness. Inquisition is trying to compete with Nile in the titles. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Day oh, yeah, let's not, let's not even go there. Let's not ruin the stream, shall we? Um, Ion Dissonance cast the first stone. Fucking banger. Fucking banger. Fucking banger. Holy shit. This this is fucking sick. Another one, if you like Code Orange, but you also like Math Core, Ion Dissonance is the shit. This was their last album, and it may be their best. I don't know. I don't know if that's a controversial opinion. The Cative Choir from It uh, It Dies Today. Oof, man. Got got some love for this album. Gets me right here. Great stuff. Yeah, dude, Ion Dissonance is fucking rad as fuck. Iron Regan with Crossover Ministry. What a fun album. This album's just a blast. This is how you make a political album that is just, like, fun. Like, it's just a good time. Like, at no point do I feel like it's getting too, like, over the line. Because it's like, you can't help but throw your fist in the air and just, like, swig your beer and just have a good old time. Um, let's see. I think Thurston Moore from Sonic Youth was in Levi. Really? I didn't know that. Chapter of Obeisance before giving breath to the inert one in the presence of the crescent-shaped horns is the best metal song title ever. That's a good one. I wrestled a bear once with Hail Mary, uh, the precursor to Spirit Box, basically, because this is Courtney LaPlante and her husband, if I'm not mistaken, who is the I Wrestled a Bear Once guitarist. This is the only I Wrestled a Bear Once album Courtney is on because previously it was a different vocalist. And then they disbanded and uh, then Courtney and the guitar player formed Spirit Box. And so I'm stoked on that record too. And that, uh, if you like Spirit Box and you haven't listened to this, it's really good. It's like a more technical Spirit Box is basically what it is. Awesome shit. Fainer, I thought you were dead, man. I haven't seen you around in a while. Good to see you in here. Do you own Cerebral Boar's album? I do not. Um, I'm just but one man, and with many mouths to feed at that. Hey, Fainer, how you been, man? Yeah, seriously, how have you been? You haven't been around the Discord. Y'all be sure to join the Discord, because we're chatting every day. We're having a grand old time over there. All right, what else we got? Oh, I mentioned them earlier. Jesus Peace, super fucking hard, metallic hardcore. For you Code Orange fans. Did I break the case? I don't know. Sounded like something broke. Ooh, John Frum with stirring the a stirring in the noose. Fucking sick record. Has a, I forget which member, but it has a member of the Dillinger Escape Plan, and it's kind of a super group. It has a bunch of people from a different bunch of different groups. I forget who's all involved. But this is this is a really good album. You you wanna you wanna check this out. Um, and it's like super death metal, intense, kind of all over the place. It's hard to describe, honestly. Oh, Spirit Box from your hometown. Go figure. Uh, speaking of Judas Priest, we have Screaming for Vengeance. If there's one album to have from Judas Priest, I would argue this is the one. Yes, even more than Painkiller. Even though I like Painkiller. Um, we've got Calicur with Heart of Lead awesome more kind of like atmospheric progressive black metal sort of but a lot more than that really cool stuff love this album art too i'm realizing it has kind of like a twin peaks vibe too with the chevron 
going on there. So that's kind of neat. I wonder if that was on purpose. Fits the vibe. Start a new job in cryptocurrency. Oh man, overwhelmed for sure. Well, glad to see you in here, man, and glad you're you're hopefully doing well with all that. Superbox also happens to be the best ever. Yeah. I think the bassist, the former drummer from Revocation, is on there as well. For John Frum, you might be correct. In fact, now I'm now now it's gonna bother me. I'm gonna go ahead and Google it. John Frum band. See how easy it is to derail me? Look what you did. Um John Frum members. Okay, we've got bassist Liam Wilson of Azusa X Starkweather and X Mercure. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, and also um X Dillinger Escape Plan, it looks like. Uh, Eli Litwin, um, Knife the Glitter, X Circadian Rising, X Burden. Man, this guy's a lot of X stuff. He's been in a lot of bands. I'm trying to see what stands out, though. I'm not as familiar with the bands listed here, except for Knife the Glitter. Uh, Matt Hollenberg on guitars of Cleric, Shardic, Titan 2, Tachyons, and X Holenlarm. And Derek Ridequist on vocals who is a bereft and X the faceless. That was faceless. That was the one of the ones that I was thinking of. Didn't see revocation in those, uh, in those credits. So I'm not sure. Let's see. I really like song painkiller. Is there anything else? Dude, check out screaming for vengeance. That album is really fun. Like every song is probably one of their most consistent albums. Like there's a lot of great songs on there. Um, Late for Nothing also features... Oh, really? I thought Courtney was only on Hail Mary. Or is she just on, like, a song on Late for Nothing? Because I thought... I forget the other vocalist name, but I thought she was on all the other ones. Do you prefer CDs over vinyl? I like vinyl, but guess what? I buy a lot of albums. I have three kids and uh, a mortgage. I can't afford vinyl <laughs> in this uh, capacity. I have a few, as you can see behind me sometimes. But, uh, yeah... I'd love to do vinyl, but also it's a space thing too. We do have a record player, but it's just, yeah, it's just, uh, CDs are easier and cheaper. Chris Penny and Bill, Billy Reimer from the Dillinger Escape Plan have been bouncing between super groups. Oh, we've got our first interruption of the day. What's up? I don't know about a sleepover, but she can come inside right now if you want to quietly watch a movie. <laughs> Speaking of mouths to feed, there you go. Um, let's see. Lots of X's, those quick scoper gamer tags on Xbox. Painkiller is sonically their heaviest album, so not really. Yeah, I mean, it's not as heavy, but Screaming for Vengeance is great. All right, we've got Calma with Palo, my personal favorite Calma album. Really good stuff. Um,. Getting a little wild here with Ken Mode and Loved. I describe this album as a noisier reimagining of like a modern take on Nirvana's Bleach. <laughs> it's the best way I can put that. Uh, ooh, classic new metal album here. Kitty with Spit. I don't care what anyone says. There's some fucking bangers on here. That opening track and then, of course, Brackish. Dude, Brackish is in my workout playlist and I fucking go hard to brackish that that opening riff uh speaking of going hard also in my workout playlist we've got knocked loose with a different shade of blue fucking awesome record uh also for fans of code orange i would say but with the uh the yelpier barking vocals i guess you could put it the arf arf if you will yeah and oddly weird i i i tend to uh, specialize in that i like to think the metal meltdown that i specialize in coming up with really concise bizarre but oddly descriptive ways of uh of putting out band's name out there that's that's my elevator pitch for ken mode i suppose oh wait and there's a few more on this stack oh and then we're through the stacks did i miss anything else let's see Late for Nothing's Courtney's first. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that one out. I must have missed out on that. What what kind of shade of blue is that? I I don't know. I guess I guess this one on here. 
I assumed it was a reference to like bruises or maybe depression or maybe a little bit of both. Maybe there's a little like cross pollination going on there between violence and mental health. Seem would seem fitting of knock loose. Man, sorry, the, the kids are coming in here, so bear with the noise. This is I'm surprised in that four hour stream we did not get interrupted once. That was a uh shock, quite honestly. All right, we've got some more new metal here. My four of my favorite new metal albums that I still enjoy listening to this day. We've got Korn's self-titled iconic album cover there. Uh, we got Life Is Peachy, which is not as good but still solid. Still has a lot of really great jams on it. Follow the Leader, absolute classic, another iconic cover. Endless just replayability on those songs and then my personal favorite issues Ugh, every song on here is awesome it's just such a well-made album and i love it i love it to death i'm not a big fan of post issues corn but that new one was actually pretty good and i do plan on at some point doing a corn tier list but i need to actually kind of go through and sort of like I did with Mudvayne, re-listen to some of the albums that I didn't really particularly enjoy at the time. They still make great singles, though. Like, the, I'll always give Korn that. Like, even if I don't like the album, the single is almost always great. Solid songwriters. Um, still have a crush on Fallon Bowman from Kitty. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Uh, I feel that man. We had a poster in my friend's basement, and I, I, uh, I would stare at that sometimes. Not to be too lecherous. Bear with me. I was like 16 years old. Okay, it was all right for me to have sort of a wandering gaze. Um, I had followed the leader on CD years ago. No idea what happened to it. Um, oh, I have a good story on that. Hang on a second. Um, when I was probably like 12 or something, maybe even younger, we went to visit my, um, my aunt's farm to stay there for like a week. And we got there in the middle of the night and all the lights were on. There were a bunch of cars parked out front and the former owner's son still had a key and he thought no one would be there. So he threw a house party. And so I see from the car as I'm half asleep, my dad go in and like scare all these teenagers out and they come running out the door and we go in and survey the damage. There's smoke everywhere. There's trash all over the floor. There was like a dead rat in the toilet and in the CD player was a disc of follow the leader that somebody had left behind. And I will never forget that. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of party, except for the dead rat thing. I'm not, not really into what was going on there. Corn, I, I can always count on Robert to let me know that Corn are working on their, their next album. Oh, I got a call. More, more. We'll see how long I go. I didn't really have a plan for this. Yep. Yeah.
All right, sorry about that. Um, you know, when duty calls. By the way, it's uh, I guess we can count this an early birthday stream, too, because it is my birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday to me. I'm going to be an old-ass fuck once again. Um, I know people watch me, and they all assume that I'm, like, in my 20s. But no, 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 no. I am in my mid-30s. <laughs> Um, I don't listen to them anymore, but I'll stick up for those first four, aside from all in the family <laughs> at aged poorly. Yeah. Corner working on a 14th studio album. Yes. And I know Fieldy left. I, I know, Robert. You're like an encyclopedia, dude. Like, you should get a job. Like, you know what? You should get a job at, like, Metal Archives. Like, you would you would do well there just uh, filing all these factoids away. See you on the other side of the dope album. There's some good cuts on there um shit i lost my spot where was i where it's kitty's fault why i mainly listen to metal with female vocalists yeah i'm planning on doing more uh female fronted lists too because there's just so many to highlight there's a lot of great bands um and just i always put the disclaimer in case people haven't heard me say it before no i do not think that that's a genre it's just a helpful descriptor for people who enjoy bands that just happen to have female vocalists on this channel anyways Happy early birthday. Thank you. Shit, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. You look like you're 50. Fuck you, Pyramid Head. Uh, happy birthday. Oh, my bad. Happy birthday, bro. And the beers. Yeah, the beer is coming out. Yeah, we're going to have a good time. We're going to go to this bar that is, um, it's, uh, what you call it, um, Fallout themed, or it's really all video game themed, and you can rent any game system for free and play all the games that they have for literally any system from the past to the present. And then they have all, like, screens up playing, like, dorky music videos, like Ninja Sex Party and stuff, um, and great uh, game-themed drinks, and, oh, it's great. Great place. Ready for some sugar. Yes, we are, we're getting there. Hopefully we'll get there. Let me get the next stack here. All right. So now we've got, ooh, Creator with Pleasure to Kill. Great Creator album. I need to dig more into the Creator discography. I will get around to it. Um, we got Croesus with Solemn Vodum, the original version. They just re-recorded this with the newer vocalist. I still have not listened to that version, but good stuff. Um, and also the follow-up, A Memoir to Free Will, which is awesome. If you like stuff like Archspire too, you really need to check these guys out. They're fucking awesome. You'll notice some bands around now in their band photos wearing Croesus shirts, and I'm really glad because they deserve the recognition. They're really impressive i put them in one of my bands like episodes recently too and i'm forgetting which one it, it might have been the bands like born of osiris list which very few, few people watched which uh hurt my feelings a little bit so you might want to go watch that video after this stream but anyways <laughs> um playing fallout 2 dude classic um, review Carcass's new album, yes, definitely, and do a tier list, absolutely. Carcass is definitely on the calendar. A few places like that in Toronto, yeah, dude, barcades are great. Yeah, we have a big one here, too, where it's, like, legit all pinball tables on the top floor, and then all the, like, retro consoles, all the new, um, arcade machines, and they've got a full-service bar, and, um, I'm forgetting the name of it, but it's, uh, they've, they even filmed some music videos there, uh, Aesop Rock filmed the music video there. Uh, let's see, I'm itching for two, I meant, ready to hear some new Mashuga. yeah, new Mashuga. hell yeah, looking, always looking forward to that, yeah, more barcades anywhere, mm, Archfire, yes, we're supposed to get some new Archfire too, dude, that sounds legit as fuck, it is, um, we've got, ooh, another discography here, two Mashuga albums, if you think about it, yeah, I suppose, all right, so we've got Burn the Priest with Burn the Priest, which is the original name for Lamb of God, if somehow you don't know that yet. I love earlier Lamb, the God, Lamb of God and Burn the Priest because I love Randy's old, more brutal vocals where he did the pig squeals and the deep growls. Like, that's my favorite era for him. Um, so I also love New American Gospel. Got to see them play Black Label live. And man, that pit was huge. 
my personal favorite as the ba palaces burn even though this is a classic album in terms of people remembering what a shit show the production was i love how it sounds it sounds like totally unique um, and then ashes of the wake close second to as the palaces burn for me i know a lot of people it's their favorite what's up captain rex we got sacrament which is where i started to kind of be like oh shoot they were uh knocking it out of the park every album this one not really it's kind of like half of a good album there's some good stuff on here that i still enjoy wrath is okay i've come to appreciate it but it feels very sort of phoned in and repetitive to me um i do love resolution um which has king me which goes all symphonic metal which i absolutely loved and i also enjoyed sturm und drang which had a uh, some real vicious cuts on it. I wasn't a big fan of the singing because I just don't think Randy's a very good singer, unfortunately. I'm fine with bands incorporating singing on their albums, obviously, from the other bands I put on here, but uh, Randy's just not a very good singer, <laughs> sadly. But um, Anthropoid fucking rips. That is like one of the heaviest songs they've ever, they've ever done. I did get the self-titled. It's my least favorite. Um, it kind of sucks, quite honestly, but... It was one of those things where I got it super cheap and I like to keep the whole discography. So I was like, fuck it, I'll get it. Not the most exciting album there. Let me catch up with the chat. Um, what up? Omega here. So love. Yeah. Discord invitation link down in the description doesn't work. It should be, uh, should not have a limit. Let me put a new one up in the chat for y'all. In case you want to join up. Um, let's see here. Invites people. Copy link. Boom. That one should be fresh. Um, seen Lamb of God twice in Vancouver. Yeah, they they were they were good live. Novice LG fan until I saw them open for Slayer. Hell yeah. Um, lovely album. Don't have the words to define it. Some stuff is just ineffable. Look at that. Bringing out those those $5 words. King Me Easily, one of <clears throat> Lamb of God's best cuts. I would agree. It's it's. I kind of was hoping they'd go more in that direction on later albums, but not so much. How many times have you seen Lamb of God? Just once, I think. Um, Metal Meltdown, three times. Testament and Kill Switch. Clutch and Corrosion and Conformity and, Conformity and Slayer. Awesome. Those are good lineups. Uh, we've got Left Behind with Seeing Red. This shit is raunchy as hell, man. Like, this is just, like, really intense metallic hardcore. The singer is, like, super abrasive. He's got that, like, throaty, kind of, like, guttural scream. Where it's not, like, a guttural growl. It's still a scream. It's just very hoarse. It sounds like he, like, smokes too much or something. And he just, like, belts it out and is fucking angry as shit. And it is so good. Love that one. Great stuff. Um, oh, shit. I did the thing where I have now flipped the order of these, I think. So let me fix that. It's honestly easier when they're stacked vertically. All right. So we're going to put all these back and get the next round here. We're, we're making decent progress. We're not going to finish. I will tell you that again. We are most likely not going to finish. Link is invalid. The new Link is invalid for you? That's weird. I don't know why that would be. Um, yeah, I don't know why that would be. The ones that are in on the current descriptions of most of the videos now should be valid for most people because um, I made sure it did not expire. So I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I'll have to look at that later. All right, we've got um, I guess I'll do them semi out of no, I'll do it this way. All right, so we've got uh, letters from the colony, which I just featured on a video. Really sick, kind of progressive, genty band. Let live with fake history. Doggo is whining at the door now. I don't know why he decided to come in here then. Um, awesome classic album 
We've got Linkin Park with Hybrid Theory. If you ask me, the only Linkin Park album you need. Still really great stuff. Like, I jam to that all the time. The Lion's Daughter with Existence is Horror, back when they were kind of more straightforward, sort of just blackened sludge kind of group. And now, uh, The Lion's Daughter Skin Show, which is still one of my favorite albums of this year, where now they've incorporated all these weird, like, horror synths and everything into their sound. We got Living Sacrifice with the hammering process. Awesome drumming from that band and then also conceived in fire which is another banger um loathe i let it in and it took they it took everything gotta have that album one of my favorites of 2020 and then ooh, i gotta be careful how i show this one again uh lord mantis with um <laughs> death mask awesome raunchy album that i cannot show the cover art or i'll probably get this video at least demonetized Just finish out this row and then I'll check the chat again. I also have Lord Mantis's newest one, um, uh, Universal Death Church. I had to remember the name of that one. <laughs> um, we've got Lorna Shore with Immortal, another uh, foreboding album. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that EP though. And also check out the Metal Meltdown is doing an interview with uh, the guitar player, I think. Um, the Lurking Fear with Out of the Voiceless Grave. This is At the Gates frontman Thomas Lindbergh's other band. One of his other bands, anyways. Sick stuff. Make Them Suffer with Worlds Apart. Awesome metalcore. One of my favorite newer metalcore bands from the modern era. And then even better than that one, How to Survive a Funeral. Also from Make Them Suffer. One of the best metalcore albums, if not the best metalcore album of 2020. I think it's like kind of head to head with Polaris. Um, we got uh, Malthusian with Across Death for fans of things like Abyssal, Portal, things of that nature. And then, man, I forgot I even had this. Um, we've got Mammoth Grinder with Cosmic Crypt for all your HM2 death metal intense needs. All right, and that is another rack. What do we got in the chat here? New link worked for me, says Pyramid Head. So that might be something on your end, Infected Stray. Not sure what to tell you. Randy Bly is super nice, too. He saw me walking with my cane, came over, signed my ticket. He should have signed your cane. <laughs> that would have been a better story. Told the security guard to leave me alone, too. Nice. Um, Robert Sparling, yeah, on their last tour, the one with Gojira and Behemoth Fun Night, sick. Hold on, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Can we do a remote? You can try. <laughs> All right, let me let me help out the the kiddos for a second here. <laughs> Continued interruptions. If you're watching this in the after uh, post, uh, feel free to skip forward a few minutes. Hi. Hope y'all didn't go anywhere. All right. Lamb of God of Slipknot 2015. Oh, we already said that. Saw Slipknot 2015, Lamb of God. Bullet for my Valentine, Motionless and White. Tomorrow will be four years to the day that Linkin Park 
front man passed away. Wait, he died on my birthday? What the fuck? <laughs> Not cool, Chester. What the shit? Um, Skin Show is my favorite of mine for this year as well. Amazing album, for sure. Favorite Lincoln Park moment is The Hunting Party. Interesting. Is that the one with um, Burn It Down or whatever? Because that song's a jam, but I did not particularly like the rest of the album. General consensus is the first two LPs are the only ones you need. I think we're still talking about Link Park. Don't care for Linkin Park. Just going to search for Metal Trenches using Discord. My Discord is the dumb sometimes. Berserker. Um, favorite Link Park album, Minutes to Midnight. Mushroom Head. Industrial New Metal, yeah. Um, hello, little one. Yes, she, she took a little peek, huh? I've been meaning to revisit that album. Hell yeah, make them suffer. Awesome, Daddy. Can I listen to Six Feet Under? No. No, we don't do that here. You go to your fucking room. Pair of jeans message retracted. Okay, well, what's up, pair of jeans? Oh, you came in while I was empty chair. Nice. Um, saw Linkin Park 2012. Uh, you can't listen to Six Feet Under, but you can listen to Cannibal Corpse. Yes, absolutely. It's really the reverse. Mom, can we listen to Cannibal Corpse? We have Cannibal Cannibal Corpse at home. Cannibal Corpse at home. <laughs> uh, Burn It Down was on Living Things. Okay. Mr. Pickles is the most metal thing on Hulu right now. Yeah, dude, Mr. Pickles is some crazy shit. I remember when I happened to watch that like five years ago or something. It just came on and Joanne and I were like, what the fuck? Uh, I spelt empty wrong. Is that what the retracted message was? You goon. All right. Back to the shelf. Oh, we're getting there, y'all. We're getting there to some some of the stuff you wanted. All right, we've got... Uh, oh, that's funny. So we've got Menegarm with Dodsford. Some solid older folk metal. We've got Mantar with uh, the modern art of setting a blaze. This is just some awesome kind of like punk... Black and punk almost, I would describe it. Really good stuff. Um, we got Marduk with uh, Opus Nocturne, bit of a classic there. We've got the trilogy here, Marilyn Manson with Antichrist Superstar. Um, we've got Mechanical Animals. And we have Hollywood. Gotta, gotta catch them all. Um, and why is that one backwards? Hollywood. <laughs> there we go. Um, we got Mastodon, too. We got a couple collections here. We've got leviathan man one of the bands with the best album covers i gotta say uh we've got blood mountain uh my personal favorite crack the sky although they're all really great i do not have the hunter because i'm not a fan of the hunter and we actually have once more around the sun and i don't have um the newer one because i wasn't a huge fan of that one either i did not like how they handle the vocals i don't know if it's the songwriting or the production more, but something about it just did not sound right. I gotta close my door again. All right. We have the same Marilyn Manson collection. Yeah, I think a lot of people probably have the same Marilyn Manson collection. Had to use Firefox instead of Chrome. There you go. Crack the Sky Gang. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Mastodon's Remission Gang. All right, all right. I did do a Mastodon tier list not too long ago. Dude, Car Bomb is the shoot, and I think I have a Car Bomb album. If I did, we covered it the last uh, part one, because that would be in C, obviously. Love Car Bomb. I even did an interview with Greg, the guitar player, and he is a super awesome guy. Fun fact, their newest album was highly influenced by um, My Bloody Valentine, which I would not have guessed, but that is one of his major influences. More from this rack here. We've got Mayhem with De Mysterious Dom Satanus. It's like one of those like required albums that you have to have if you have any sort of black metal collection. Uh, ooh, we've got Melichesh with Emissaries. Awesome. If you like Abzu, you will like Melichesh. Plus, they have, uh, they're from, I uh, forget exactly from where they're from, but somewhere in the Middle East, and they definitely put a lot of that into their sound and their imagery. 
That's their best album, if you ask me. They have a bunch, but that's my personal favorite. Um, we've got Mefo Rash with 1557 Rites of Nullification, which is a really expansive, just destructive black metal album. Kind of soul crushing, really. Ooh, we got Inferis from uh, Mental Cruelty, who just put out a new album, but if you ask me, I think this is the superior album. Some deathcore for you there. Here we go, Meshuga. Destroy, Erase, Improve with a classic but awful album cover <laughs> that looks like it was like printed from my computer. Um, solid album, though, and I will say Future Breed Machine was the first Meshuga song I ever heard, and it blew my fucking mind balls. Chaos Sphere, awesome, classic for sure. We've got Nothing, one of my personal favorites, because it's so, like, varied. Every song's a little bit different. Uh, we've got Obzen with the slip cover and all. Most of these are albums I've owned for a long time, too. Uh, we've got Coloss, another one of my personal favorites. I feel a very under-respected record. And I've been pleased to see on my tier list that a lot of people have been like, Coloss? I didn't think that one was that good. And I'm like, go back and listen to it. And then they comment like a day later, like, you're right, that album fucking rules. <laughs> I'm like, goddamn right it does. Um, we have, ooh, what's this? Oh, shit, I forgot this was even in here. So I've got... Um, the Violent Sleep of Reason, but a little uh, thing with little punch-out guitar picks fell out of it that i not even sure I realized I had. So that's neat. I think there's something else in here, too, maybe. So cool. Cash prizes. Get a little reward. <laughs> All right, let me see where the chat is at. Meta is amazing. Hell yeah, it is. Um... Yeah, those are all good. Mastodon albums, still enjoy the Manson trilogy. Yeah, yeah. it's mu music is music, y'all. That's what I say. Meta, hell yeah. Mordial, freaking rules. Yep, that's the one. Um, enjoy the rest of your night, man. Got to dip cheers. Yeah, thanks for sticking around, dude. Dude, I wish I could just give you Mastodon's remission. That album goes extra hard. Yeah, it's a good album. Like, it's not that I haven't listened to it. I just don't have it. Um, I'll probably pick it up at some point. Later Meltdown, yes, Meshuggah, no Megadeth. I do not own any physical copies of Megadeth albums. This is true. Um, I should correct that, but um, I have plenty of digital, but I've just never felt the need to pick up a physical copy. Yeah, Coloss fucking rules, dude. I don't give a shit. Um, we got uh, Metallica, Ride the Lightning, and Justice for All. Man, I can't get the, like, I had the lighting down before where you could see shit, right? <laughs> um, Master of Puppets. The Black Album. And that's where uh, I crank the brakes. <laughs> I don't need anything after that. Um, Meth with Mother of Red Light. Really cool. Kind of like metalcore, but with, like, post metal -y sections. Very sort of spacey and trippy. It has, um concepts around like cults and stuff too which is pretty cool um, and then we're gonna get into another weird collection here that i'm hoping will excite a few of you so we've got mindless self-indulgence <laughs> with um alienating our audience and the classic frankenstein girls will seem strangely sexy that is a fabulous album lots of fun and then I also have You'll Rebel to Anything and If. And I didn't realize they had an album after If that somehow I totally missed, but I was not particularly thrilled with what I heard of it when I checked it out. But I love me some MSI. Have anything from Mr. Bunkle Imperial Triumphant? We just did Imperial Triumphant in the eyes. We're going alphabetically, so we are in M now. But yeah, earlier on we did do Imperial triumphant and we also did phantomus for your mike Patton needs so you can always rewind to that later we've got miserist with their self-title this is really cool it's instrumental but it's like really good like death metal without vocals um mitochondrian for some really crazy technical shit um monolith 
for some doomy kind of stuff. Um, we got... Um, ooh, we're getting to some Moon Sorrow with here's where I start butchering the titles again. So, Voimasta Ya Kumiasta. And then Moon Sorrow with Kivin, Kivin Kantaja. Something like that. Great album. Super proggy, super folky. And then, um, you, <laughs> you might in Aika or some shit like that. I don't fucking know. I don't speak Finnish. I think they're Finnish if I recall. Um, and then we got mouth breather with the album. I can't stop talking about that is like really hard to get your hands on now for unknown reasons, because we still have not gotten clarification, but you can buy physical copies and I would highly recommend it. Cause this album is a fucking banger. Oh shit. <laughs> Dropping shit. All right. That was probably like a jump scare. Ooh, okay. Getting some more fun stuff here. Grab. Um, let's see, let's see. Metallica's Kill 'em All was the first CD I ever owned. Nice. MSI's album after if was good, but a lot of it sounded like a B side. Yeah. Saw Marilyn Manson in Vancouver two years ago. It was extremely enti yeah, he's he's not been doing so hot uh live. Finland doesn't exist. <laughs> What's up, Shri Watson? Um Moon Tooth. I do not have any moon tooth. Um uh, Mora Prokaza by chance. If you want to hear a black metal band turned like SoundCloud rapper. This is the band for you, and I, th that may sound awful, but trust me, this album fucking slaps. Um, I did a reaction to one of their songs, too, and uh, it was um, Check It Out. Their music videos are fun, too. They're very tongue-in-cheek, but it's like, it's hip-hop, but with black metal vocals. And, it's, and then also with like a little sort of like, almost like gypsy twist to some of the beats, so I love it. I, I really enjoyed this album. It's definitely not for everyone. Uh, Moore's Principium Est, one of my favorite and I feel most underrated melodic death metal bands. Speaking of Finland, um, we've got The Unborn, which is amazing. We have Liberation equals Termination, which is even better, I would argue. We've got Dawn of the Fifth Era. Uh, Embers of a Dying World, and the latest one, Seven, which may honestly be their best yet, and was easily probably the best melodic death metal album of last year, and one of uh, my favorite albums of the year. Really good stuff. Underrespected band. They just don't get their due. Uh, Moss Upon the Skull for a deeper cut here in Vengeful Reverence, some more like progressive death metal. Man, people are just blowing me up right now. Yes. <laughs> uh, what else? We got, um, shit, I got this turned around now, didn't I? Fuck. Uh, we've got The Motion Mosaic with Avant Garbage, really awesome, kind of like math rock sort of stuff. Uh, Mudvayne, LD50, which we were just talking about a minute ago. Still love that album. Napalm Death with Throws of Joy in the Jaws of Defeatism. <laughs> this album, like, I can't believe they threw out this, one of the best albums of their career. So late in their career. It's amazing. Necropanther with The Doomed City. If you like Skeleton Witch, you may have seen me wear this shirt, too. I've had them on the podcast. It is basically Skeleton Witch... Still sounding like Old Skeleton Witch, plus every album is a concept album based on a sci-fi book. So this one's based on Logan's Run. The previous one was based on Dune. They are really good. Um, and then we've got Nightmare with Cacophony of Terror. There's some really good extreme metal there. Check on the chat while I pull these. Can you do a Pantera tier list? I should do a Pantera tier list not sure if i have that in my to-do list so i will add that that is a good idea i have not done that yeah i don't see them in the list either 
And that's a nice short discography too. It's a little less imposing. <laughs> Unlike other bands that I've had to tackle. Like, let me tell you all, that Cannibal Corpse tier list took a lot out of me because I had to go back and re-listen to all that because I hadn't listened to some of those albums in a long time. Um, great Southern Trend Kills, Pantera's Best. It's a great song, but not their best album. I would argue it's not their best album. It's not even their second best. Maybe third. Suicide Note 2 is my favorite song. Um, that, yeah, sucks that we lost D Dimebag for sure. Moore's is truly underrated. Absolutely. Definitely, bro. Napalm Death are touring North America with Guar. I actually didn't know that. Do you like Night Flight Orchestra? Yeah, I do enjoy me some Night Flight Orchestra. Hang on. Now the neighbor's asking about his kid. <laughs> Let me ask if they can finish their movie. All right, we've got dad stuff, y'all. I always got dad stuff. If you always wonder, if you ever wonder why I like, I didn't do a video today, which kind of worked out because then I had room for the live stream without uh, stepping on one of my videos. But life happens when you're dead. All right, Noctambulist with Atmospheres of De Desolation. I've been pimping out their new album, which you should definitely check out as well. If you love Ulcerate, you will love Noctambulist. Um, what's sci-fi story with Skeleton, which is forever abominate? No, I think you misunderstood me. So, unless they did it too, but... So, Skeleton Witch, so... Necropanther sounds like Skeleton Witch, and Necropanther, each album, is based on a sci-fi story. I do love Forever Abomination. Speaking of Skeleton Witch, I don't know if you can... Oh, you can't see it. The microphone's blocking it. There's the poster there, there, thereabouts. <laughs> that album was produced by Kurt Ballou, too. Oh, uh, we got Deep Cut here. Nodes of Ranvier with their self-titled Obscure Metalcore album that is really good. Um, ooh, we got some Nocturnal Mortem. More foreboden albums. Um, with uh, Voice of Steel, best one, so good. They got a lot of good albums. I did do a Nocturnal Mortem tier list, which was surprisingly uh, well-received. And then we've got the follow-up. Um, shit, why am I forgetting the English translation of this title? Because they have it in Ukrainian, <laughs> and I don't fucking read, read that shit. But I love their new logo, too. Plus, I love this uh, artwork that they did. Very good stuff. For you nocturnal uh, mortal fans in the crowd, you can remind me what the... Verity. Verity. That's what it translates to. Ooh, and then we're moving into another pretty lengthy discography here. Serpents Unleashed. Yes, that's my personal favorite. Noctambulus is bop. Hell yeah, they are. What shows am I looking forward to? Uh, well, I would have jumped on that uh, Black Dahlia murder tour because they're coming here, but that's sold out like instantly. <laughs> and so that's not happening. So it's kind of like... Whoever happens to be playing on the right day at the right time, I'll be excited about it. I'll, I'll be happy to see pretty much anyone right now. Uh, Norma Jean, Bless the Martyr, and Kiss the Child. Norma Jean, Oh God, The Aftermath. Good Lord. No, Brindley has to go home, in fact. But I asked if you could finish your movie. Watch your movie. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a work night, hon. I'm not going to argue with you with an audience. <laughs> Oh shit, did I kill the stream? Oh no, am I still live? Oh no, you broke the stream. Oh no, it's broken. What happened? Are we dead? Is it the internet? What happened here? Me, but the camera's frozen. Oh, interesting. Huh. What did I do? Did I do something? Let me try. Uh, what do I do? Oh, man. What is going on here? Oh, the camera, like, it's totally turned off. The, like, light isn't even on anymore. Do the old disconnect, reconnect.
Nope, still not working. What the heck? I don't know what happened, y'all. My camera dipped out on me. Hmm. Would have liked to at least... I don't like being mid-discography. <laughs> uh, what the heck? Um, hmm. Well, <laughs> Fear Factory was right about everything, yeah, for sure. What happened? That's so weird. Huh. Very odd. Properties. Oh, there we go. I think we're back up and running. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Oh, my goodness. Hang on. All right. Her buddy's got to go home. All right, Norma Jean. Oh, God, the aftermath. <laughs> Norma Jean, Redeemer. One of my personal favorites. These are all good, though. Uh, Norma Jean, the anti-mother. Uh, we got Norma Jean with Meridional. Another awesome album. Wrongdoers, which is super fire. And then Polar Similar, which is just kind of okay. I wasn't a huge fan of this one. And then same with uh, All Hail. I was a little bit lukewarm on that. I plan on redoing my Norma Jean tier list at some point because I'm not entirely happy with the one I have up right now. But uh, yeah, I'll get to it. Did I listen to Dragon Force in the 2000s? Yeah, a little bit. Of course, the the one with the, through Fire and Flames. Um, I liked their newer one, too. I did a review of their newer one. It was actually one of my earlier video reviews, oddly enough, because it's a little bit off-brand in a way. But I, I I, like me some Dragon Force. They're fun. I like fun bands. I can handle stuff that's kind of cheesy, almost on purpose. Um, some post-metal and sludge with North Light the Way. Awesome atmospheric album. Ooh, the number 12 looks like you, an inch of gold for an inch of time. It's just like a kind of an EP type thing, but we also have Nuclear Sad Nuclear, which is a classic in the math core scene. We also have Mongrel, one of my personal favorites. And then one of my favorite albums of all time, the number 12 looks like you, worse than alone. If there's one number 12 looks like you album you look you listen to, it's this one. It is just so well done. And no, I did not particularly like the new one, unfortunately. It was a bummer. <laughs> I was super stoked about that one, too. Dragon Force's cover of Celine, Dion Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On sucks. I'll bet it's amazing. I'll bet it's amazing, and I'll bet I'll love it. <laughs> All right, I think I'll finish this rack and call it for now because I'm sweating like a pig. Um, because we are getting to some more good stuff here. We've got Numenorian with Adore. Loved this album. One of my favorites of, I think, 2019 that was. Ode to Sun with Dark Dunes of Titan, which I recommended on my For Fans of Opeth list. Bands like Opeth. Speaking of which, we have Opeth with Orchid. We have Opeth with... The Candlelight Years, which is a cool multi-disc compilation of, you get Orchid, Morning Rise, and My Arms, Your Hearse, all together. All right, we've got Blackwater Park on another fancy premium booklet version. Like, I gotta have it, because I gotta be fancy sometimes, gotta be bougie. Uh, we've got Ghost Reveries. And we have Watershed. 
And as far as I'm concerned, the Opeth discography ends there. <laughs> now, I'm fine with their new stuff. I'm just not a huge fan of that style. So just doesn't do much for me. Uh, going back to some oldies, we got Orgy with Candy Ass <laughs> for some more new metal and industrial flavor. We've got Panopticon with Roads to the North. Also Autumn Eternal. I thought I had Kentucky, but maybe I don't. And also um, The Scars of Man on the Once Nameless Wilderness Part 1. I haven't bought the new one, but I did enjoy it quite a bit. Speaking of Pantera, we got Cowboys from Hell, which I'd say is the second best Pantera album. And then we've got Vulgar Display of Power, which is easily... Their best album, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, man, I keep seeing collections where I'm like, oh, I want to share that too. All right, we got a perfect circle with Mare de Gnomes. Still love this album to death. I think it's their best. Um, and then we've got 13th Step, which is also very good, but probably my second favorite. And then we have Emotive, so kind of the original trilogy. I, look, I've even got the old hologram cover because I got this when it came out. Uh, also don't have their new one because it fucking sucks. So there you go. <laughs> so much as I love Maynard, I think that was a misstep. Uh, we got Periphery with Periphery 1, Periphery 2, uh, Juggernaut, Omega, Those are out of order, I just realized. Juggernaut Alpha, which should have been first. And then Periphery 3 and Periphery 4. We got them all. And I got to see them live 2019, I think. And they opened with <laughs> Reptile, that like 20 minute track, and it was amazing. Oh, man. It's so hard to stop. <laughs> um, what we got? My Arms, Your Hearse is an amazing album, of course. Just realized one of your videos introduced me to number 12. Hell yeah, dude. Glad to hear that. That makes me super stoked. Anytime my videos turn people on to new stuff, like, that's the whole point of the channel. So that means I'm doing my job. Rate my metal theories. A, Ginger is Deftones with more brutal vocals. B, In Flames is Swedish Corn. <laughs> C, Cradle of Filth is Black Metal Nickelback. D, Opeth's Past Decade is Moshable Elevator Music. Those are great. I gotta put uh, Ginger's Deftones with more brutal vocals. I think that goes at the top. That's S tier. That's pretty solid. Um, In Flames is Swedish Corn. I put that at A tier too. I put that. It's almost like an order here, I would say. Um, that's A tier. Then Cradle of Filth is Black Metal Nickelback. I think that's a little harsh. Honestly, I think that their newer stuff is the best stuff they've ever done. Um, I really like new Cradle of Filth, honestly, more than old Cradle of Filth. So I'd, I'd put that one. That's more D tier. And then Opeth's Past, past Decade is Moshable Elevator Music. I, I'll put that at B tier. That's pretty solid stuff, too. I like those. Maybe I heard Walk in This Love too much to care about Vulgar anymore. Yeah, they definitely got played to death. Ginger is Lamb of God without a female vocalist. Hey. I'd argue that they sound more like... They're a little bit too like artsy almost to be Lamb of God. They're kind of more like... I compare them to like Sixth. And the bands I did on my Bands Like Ginger video. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They're they're tough to nail down, and it's like also I throw like Gwen Stefani in the mix too for some of the comparison, which she is a big fan of. Tatiana, Tool Show in Portland was the last concert of their Fear Inoculum tour. Yeah, I I missed that. Maybe I should have gone to it. Legendary, I guess. Wait, maybe I should listen to Ginger. I like both those descriptions. Yes, Shreve, you should listen to Ginger, and check out my bands like Ginger video. Shameless plug. 
Um, I definitely will be reviewing that album and doing a tier list. It'll be a shorter one, but I'll be doing it nonetheless. Um, people like Ginger, so I'm going to milk the fuck out of that name <laughs> on the channel. You better believe it. And I enjoy it, so it works. Uh, Tati from Ginger seems to be channeling. Gwen Stefani, there it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she is a big Gwen Stefani fan. Um, hopefully she will not do what Gwen Stefani did and, and leave like the band behind and do a solo career that nobody cares about. Or at least I didn't care about. Do I collect action figures? A little bit. Um, we have a few. We have some like horror themed ones. My my uh, significant other, she loves Jason Voorhees. So I got her a Jason Voorhees action figure with interchangeable masks and stuff. I do like that stuff. But I'm also a very anti-clutter kind of guy. The only thing I really collect is the CDs. This is like my one element of the house. Joanna likes to collect everything <laughs> under the sun. You're a Portlandian. Yes, I am. I bought my first death vinyl on Hawthorne Street. That's funny because we were just there yesterday at the uh, vintage store. So I'm wondering if you bought it at the store we were at. Now, nah, Tati relies on their bassist, Eugene, to do interviews. Those two will always be together. Their drummer is fucking sick, too, from Ginger. We need a room tour video from you. There's not much to see, y'all. Like, I'll, I'll level with you. So, <laughs> not to break the immersion too much, but so here's my domain. This is my side of the office where all the magic happens with all the cool shit. You turn just about 90 degrees in this direction, and it's little kid zone. <laughs> this is where the kids do their their schoolwork and make a mess and do art projects that end up all over the floor. So that's my room tour. <laughs> there's there's not much out of frame that you do not see. If you want to see my setup, I don't think the the string is very far, but uh, we've got a light over here. My dad's old lamp that he made in college that I put an LED bulb in. And, um, and then the camera and where I put my phone to record most of the videos. And there you go. Robert, you finally got your room tour that you've been begging for for like a year. <laughs> yes, I've broken the fourth wall and now everything is ruined. Now every time I do a video, all you'll be able to think about is the pink and green desk that is just six feet to my right. Um, can't wait for a new Ginger album. Yeah, for sure. Um, the new single I like... But I don't like it as much as the stuff on the previous album that were the singles. Like, I think Homeback is probably the best song that they've done, period, so far. It's just so diverse and super heavy. It has a great heavy opening, but then it's got that cool kind of jazzy middle section. Great song. Actually like that room, too. <laughs> Every true metalhead owns a pink and green desk. Fuck yeah, they do. And a cat, usually, but I don't have cats. We have three little prissy dogs. One's over here. Harley, you want to say hi? Come here. Come here. This is just one of three. This is Harley. She's been in a video before. She was in one of my reaction videos early on. She gulped. You want to say hi? Or are you scared? Yeah, this is Harley. We have another Boston Terrier bandit. And then we got a little uh, Bijan York mix named uh brock after brock samson from venture bros and he's a little shit so it's kind of an ironic name for him one of the members of the thralls of metal just had his third child a month ago yeah man a bunch of dads there cute pup hi harley <laughs> do you collect action for yeah um yes i said yes um to a degree my i my uh, wife is obsessed with Jason Voorhees, so I got her a Jason Voorhees boxed action figure for her birthday. It's like one of the fancy ones with the mask you can take off and everything. All right, a few more, and then we're going to wrap because it is a work night, and I am, again, sweating like crazy, but I can't seem to stop either. Uh, we got the plot in you with um, Firstborn. We have some more metalcore. The plot in you, could you watch your children burn, which is fun stuff. I'm not as into their later stuff after that. Um, oh, this stuff's close to my heart. These are albums, again, that I've been holding on to since high school. So we got Poison the Well, the opposite of December, uh, one of the earliest metalcore albums I really got into. 
Poison the Well Tear from the Red. One of, probably, I've, I've called this my favorite album of all time, and it's probably one of my most re-listened albums, but is Poison the Well, You Come Before You. I absolutely adore this. And we were actually, um, I was having a bunch of people in the Discord listen to it, and most people seem to, to really enjoy it. Um, we've also got Poison the Well with uh, Versions, which was upside down for some reason, and The Tropic Rot. And unfortunately, that is the end of a very awesome discography. was honored to do an interview with Chris, the drummer, Chris Hornbrook. Very nice dude. Recommend that episode. Um, from newer metalcore, we've got Polaris with The Death of Me. I love all of Polaris's albums. This is the only one I just happen to have a physical copy of. I think it's probably their best. And again, it kind of tied for first for metalcore albums last year. They're very, like, under oath, which I was a huge under oath fan. Still kind of am. Yeah, we'll wrap up. I lied. So we're, we're doing two rows here, even though I kind of want to go into the next row because it's got some really good stuff, too. But I got to cut off somewhere I'll, or I'll never stop. And there's a lot of rows left. Pig Destroyer. Oh, why is this? Am I missing stuff? Oh, I skipped one. All right, some more covers. I got to lightly censor here when I hold them up. <laughs> Uh, Pig Destroyer with Terrifier, my personal favorite. Did a tier list for these guys recently. Um, oh, this one's self-censored because there's a sticker on it. Pig Destroyer, Phantom Limb. Pig Destroyer, Book Burner. And Pig Destroyer, Head Cage, which, unpopular opinion it seems, but this is like my second favorite. I know it's more of almost like a groove metal album than like a grindcore album, but it's fucking sick and every song rips and they all sound different. Um, which you can't necessarily say about all of the other albums. So, But yeah, Pig Destroy is sick. Yeah, Terrifier is a masterpiece. Um, does YouTube scold you for explicit covers? Yes, um, you can get demonetized. And um, not that I make a ton from ad revenue, but I make enough that I wouldn't want to lose it. And any little bit helps uh, to feed the hungry mouths in my household that you've now seen a few times at this point. <laughs> Um, and then we've got the Probot album. I really wish that Dave Grohl would do another one because this is just so sick. And um, then we have another discography that is close to me. Yeah, dude, YouTube does scold everyone for everything. I'm even careful about what I say now. Um, are you doing a Prowler in the Yard set at Decibel Metal and... Oh, they are doing a Prowler in the Yard. Yeah, I think I heard about that. That's really awesome. Um, yeah, and I don't have Prowler in the Yard on physical. I need to grab that. I'm surprised I've heard cussing in this stream even. Yeah, I'm fine with cussing because that doesn't get you demonetized as long as it's not in the first 30 seconds, at least at this point. You know, that may change because YouTube loves to just change things overnight and your your whole channel will get, like, kicked <laughs> out of nowhere. But, uh, yeah, I... I I don't, like, I try not to self-censor too much, but I am sort of mindful that, like... There are rules, and it's their platform, so I'm just going to follow them the best that I can so that I can still share sick music to y'all of you. Y'all of you? <laughs> y'all of you. They do great collection. It's weird to see you without the mask. I know. That's what people say. I would wear the mask for the live streams, but if you think I'm sweating in this, that rubber, ugh, it would be dripping all over the place. It's disgusting. Um... Yeah, how can you cuss next to that table? <laughs> I know, right? I mean, they've heard it all, so what are you going to do? That's good right on. That's good to hear. I know YouTube is hella strict. Yeah, getting stricter every day. That's one of the many reasons that I don't have a channel. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff you kind of have to navigate if you, um, um, you know, want to make ad revenue in particular, but also in some cases if you want to keep a channel, because uh, the, the scariest thing for me, honestly, is copyright stuff, because I had those two strikes at one point, because a label um, struck two of my videos for using short clips, which is fair use. Um, you can't just repost someone's song, because absolutely that is copyright infringement, but they were like seven second clips as a part of a larger commentary of things, and that is fair use. But they still were claimed, and um, there were some other reasons they went into it that were kind of fair. 
Um, luckily, they were rescinded. But if I had gotten another strike, the whole channel would have been obliterated. But thankfully, that didn't happen. And now we are at 5,500 subscribers, which I cannot thank you all enough for. It's really pretty amazing. Um, we got Primitive Man with Caustic. Lots of great Primitive Man albums. This is my personal favorite. No Ethan decently now. He's a real cool dude. Um, I already said Probot. Did I get these out of order? I, H, I, J, V, Q, I, yeah. Um, all right, and then we're moving into the last discography I'll cover tonight before we get into the next one. Um, we've got Protest the Hero, Love Protest. We got Kezia, or Kezia, as I've been corrected now. I've been saying Kezia for years, even though they on the album say Kezia. But for some reason, I'm stubborn, I guess. Um, we got Protest the Hero, Fortress, which the album art has water damage, but I picked it up and gave it some love because I found it in like a dollar bin. And I was like, oh, that album deserves better. Uh, we got Protest the Hero, Scurrilous. Um, Protest the Hero, these got out of order too. Volition, my personal favorite, where every track is a fucking banger. We've got Pacific Myth, solid EP. And then their latest one, Palimpsest, which kind of rocketed to being one of my favorites of theirs. It is really another great comeback album. And then I also have Piron, What Passes for Survival, my personal favorite from them. And then also Abscess Time, which was a really great album from last year. Great album art, too. And Doug. Doug is a friend of the channel at this point. I've had him on the podcast twice. I could talk to him all day. He's just a sweetheart and a really interesting dude. And so I think we will we will leave it at that for this stream. We did pretty good. So part one in four hours, it took us four hours to get through from here to, where did we leave off? Like about here. And so now, and I don't know how, how long have we been going now? I've lost track. I don't even see the timer. Well, in any case, we went from here to down here. So I feel like we kept a better pace this time. So I'm hoping it'll we might be able to finish at least the metal in one more episode, and then we have the alternative down there too. But it just sort of depends. So I'll keep doing this until I get through the whole dang thing. But it has been fun to do these. Um, let's check the chat before we close out here. I thought the fair use cutoff limit was 30 seconds. No, dude. I mean, technically, you should be able to do that. Again, if you are providing commentary, if you are doing it effectively and additively in some way. But the reality of it is, if you try to do a 30-second clip, forget about it. Your video will get blocked, if not struck, almost with certainty. Um, 10 seconds is even pushing it. It depends... Um, obviously when I do like my, uh, best of band camp, I have more leeway cause a lot of those are unsigned bands and they're just happy to get any, any sort of exposure that they can. So some of them, like I could honestly play full songs and they wouldn't mind, but I just, we don't time for it in the episode. So I don't, and I just prefer to be on the safe side, but I've had times where even like an eight second clip got claimed and I had to cut down, I had to like shave it down to six seconds and then it went through. It's just really annoying. Like these, some of these companies are just really litigious and it's so annoying. But yeah, dude, don't try using 30 second clips. Trust me. Uh, stick with about seven seconds. That is like the safest bet. Honestly, if you can do five, that's better. Because um, when my channel got monetized, even it like on the back end, demonetized a whole bunch of old videos and I had to like go back through and um, fix them. Not that money is the most important thing on this channel, but again, I've got a family and I put a lot of time into this. So they say, if you do something well, get paid for it. And so I'll, I will squeeze every dollar out of it that I can while I'm having a good time. I will never, if it's not fun anymore, I just won't do it. And I'll just say, fuck it to the, the cash side of things. Infected Stray says, I'm glad I found your channel. I'm glad you did too, dude. Album that you were most excited for, but didn't deliver. I've covered a few of those, these streams so far. Um, I think the number 12 looks like you. That comes readily to mind, that latest one. I was super hyped for that. And it just, 
was not what I wanted. I think Genghis Tron too, to an extent, but I wasn't as hyped for that. Um, but yeah, I think <laughs> I think the number twelve jumps most readily to mind because I saw them twice live. I love their old albums. I have a special connection with a lot of their older albums because I was like in college while I was listening to Worse Than Alone, like on the subway, going through a lot of like rough shit too. And so, yeah, for that to come out and kind of be disappointing was a little bit rough. But I'll live. I bought Volition after watching your Tear Lit. Fuck yeah, dude. Volition is the shit. Again, y'all make me so... Those are my favorite comments. Like, seriously, every video, any opportunity you have to tell me that, like, hey, after watching that video, I went out and bought this or I went out and listened to this and I love this band now, like, that makes it all worth it honestly like even if my whole channel got demonetized but people were telling me that stuff it would still feel like it was worth it and then i'll just start chilling for uh raid shadow legends and then <laughs> then i'll just i'll figure it out awesome stream bro i'm glad i caught you yeah thanks for being here everyone daddy kane says see ya have a wonderful night i'll see you on discord hell yeah dude thanks for popping in and um Feel free to watch the restream, too, when it goes up. I'll try to put little chapters in it, too, like I did last time. But that'll be me. Uh, thanks again to everyone. I also want to do... Uh, I don't do it enough. Let me shout out my patrons, too. So I've got a few people supporting on Patreon. Just taking that extra step, given uh, mostly a dollar, but a few people, $5, some $2. I've actually got a few um, pretty good ones here. Let me... Where are my active... These are all my active peeps. Okay, so shout out to Tom Cooper, Ellen Madston, Carl Kidwell, Lord Slothrop, Kevin L. Bean, David Dines, Lord, Sl Lord Slothrop's on here twice. Interesting. You might be paying twice, bro. <laughs> uh, Nick Padovani, who I believe is Nick from um, Equipoise, so that's cool. Um, Antonio Bronze Oliveira, I'm probably mispronouncing your name, and Sean T., Thank you all for your patronage and taking that extra step to just, you know, just a dollar a month or whatever. It seems like so little, but it adds up and it helps me kind of just keep at this even with all the other stuff I have going on. So special thanks to them. Feel free to hop on the Patreon if you want to take that extra step. I know a lot of people can't right now and I respect that too, but I do try to give some like early access and working on some potential other perks and things like that too so thank you everyone just for being here and for 5500 subscribers and i will see you with plenty more videos more coming this week more tier lists i try to do a tier list every week and then the other weekly videos i do more best of band camp to share you those underground gems and just watch as much as you can that's what i always say the best thing you can do to support the channel is even if you're not interested necessarily in the topic, just to support me, if you click that video and you watch it all the way to the end, that tells YouTube that, hey, I'm going to recommend this to five more people, and hopefully they will be more interested too. So thank you all, and that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in...